This is part three of a lecture on your reading from chapter 16, section two. We've been talking about bacteria cells and their structure. We're going to talk today in this lecture about reproduction and a little bit about genetics of bacteria. Again, we're focusing on uh, the bacterial kingdom, not really the archaea, but they're both prokaryotic. Okay, if we look at reproduction in bacteria, it is uh, very rapid. The mechanism that's used is somewhat much simpler than mitosis. It's called binary fission and simply involves um, replicating the bacterial chromosome and enlarging the cell and then creating um, a new cell wall to separate uh, the two cells. And your textbook has a diagram, uh, figure 1611 on page 363, which gives a pretty good um, illustration of it. So it's much simpler than mitosis. So we don't have to create a spindle fiber apparatus um, to separate the chromosomes. We don't have to involve disintegrating or getting rid of the cell membrane, the nuclear membrane, all sorts of other factors. So when I say very rapid, typically under the right conditions, uh, a bacterial cell will divide every 20 minutes. So that means if we start with one bacterial cell, uh, at 12 hours later we'll have 68 billion cells. Another characteristic of binary fission is that it results in clones, in other words, cells that are identical. So identical daughter cells or progeny cells. Another feature is that um, we do see mutations that occur and because of the rapid cell division, uh, mutations can appear more rapidly um, than in, long, in organisms that take longer to reproduce. Other characteristic or one other uh, aspect of bacteria that I want to talk about is um, what is sometimes called bacterial genetics. Um, bacteria, as I mentioned, um, divide very simply. They don't have um, a reproductive cycle that allows for exchange of uh, genes, but there are some uh, types of proceed or proto types of uh, behaviors they initiate and that does uh, can lead to recombination of genes. So there's three categories um, that I want to talk about and we've talked about some of these before. In fact two of them before. So these are ways in which bacteria can exchange genetic information. And the three mechanisms, or three ways in which they do that, include transformation. So I'm going to write the terms down first, and then I'll talk about each in turn. Uh, transformation, conjugation, 
and lastly, transduction. Okay, transformation we've talked about when we talked about how bacteria are used to clone genes from different species. Uh, transformation refers to the uptake of naked DNA from the environment. So this is doesn't involve any special structures, um, but if cells, when cells die, the cell membranes rupture, so the DNA can be uh, found in small pieces in the environment. Other cells in that area can take those small pieces of DNA up uh, through the cell wall into through the cell membrane and they can actually, uh, those genes can become part of the bacterial chromosome. A second type of way that bacteria can exchange genetic information is called conjugation and this is actually a mechanism we haven't talked about before. And in this method, um, bacteria actually form bridges between each other. And the structure that's used is a special type of pili. And what will happen is that, so we've got two cells. One cell is always going to be the donor and as it replicates its DNA, that DNA can be transferred across that bridge uh, to be taken up by the second cell. So that's called conjugation. A third category of genetic recombination is called transduction and I'll briefly show you um, that mechanism. In transduction, so let's draw cell membrane, cell wall. In transduction, the agent that is involved in exchanging the pieces of DNA is actually a virus. That contains RNA or DNA. And viruses that infect bacteria are called phages or more technically bacteriophage. And so what they do is actually inject oops, I should use a different color here. They inject their DNA or RNA into the bacteria cell and they cause that bacteria cell to make copies of the virus um, RNA or DNA and new virus particles are produced by the cell and sometimes those virus particles have pieces accidentally of the bacterial chromosome or the bacterial DNA inside of it. So if this was one of the progeny viruses that was produced during this infection of this cell, possibly pieces of the bacterial chromosome might have been captured uh, during the synthesis of this particular uh, virus and so this bacteric phage can then infect other bacterial cells 
and therefore transfer those genes to another bacteria cell. So that's one way that genes can be exchanged. So we've got transformation, conjugation, and transduction. All right, one last comment about uh, reproduction, or one other aspect of um, bacteria. Some bacteria are able to uh, produce um, a form, a very um, resistant form of their cell that's called an endospore and so this is really represents a dormant phase of a bacteria and it's very resistant to drought and high temperatures, low temperatures and so on and this allows bacteria cells to survive extreme sometimes not so favorable and conditions and then the endospore will uh, convert itself to a reproducing bacteria.